Hey guys, in this video I'm just going to go over how to make a stock audio track as long as you like by basically creating loops and have to be perfect loops of course. So that's what we're going to go over today. All right, let's get into it. Now this will work on absolutely any stock audio track you like from whichever provider you're using. Um, I'm just using Filmstro for the purposes of this demonstration and I'm going to use this track here. Um, and instead of just downloading the um, static mix basically, I'm just going to quickly create a kind of more bespoke version of this. So I'm just going to load up a blank timeline and then just go for it. I'll just create this in real time real quick. Yeah, no, I've just got to bring in some power now, I think, just to make it a bit more finished. Cool. So that'll do actually. So what we're going to do is we're just going to assume that stays the same for the rest of the track. Now, one thing I will say is you're going to need to know what the BPM is because the next step to get perfect loops, you do need to know what the BPM is. I know there's obviously solutions out there where you've got kind of ham-fistedly, awkwardly try in something like, you know, a free tool like Audacity or other kind of like pure audio editors or even in your NLE to try and do this kind of visually. But I just, yeah, the results aren't going to be musically perfect from a kind of integrity point of view. Um, and you can definitely do better than that. And this will still be free, right? So I'll just show you how to do that. So I'm just going to download this track, um, just export the soundtrack, and we'll use this as the example then to make it longer. So I'm just taking a quick note of the BPM as well, as well which is 80. I'm just going to download this track now. What we're going to do now is we'll just open this in Logic. Now, Logic Pro is a... Uh, a digital audio workstation, DAW for short, um, similar to GarageBand. We could have also done this in GarageBand, so if you're on a Mac, then obviously you can use that for free. Um, and for those of you who don't own a Mac and want to do something similar, there are free DAWs available for PC, and there are some free DAWs available that are just, you know, um, cross-platform. And the workflow would be incredibly similar. So, but principally the workflow is as follows. So first we're going to in, um, import this track. And once we've got that track in here, you can see it's loaded up. Uh, we're going to change the BPM to 80. Um, that's really important. And then the other thing we need to check is where does this track start in terms of the... Um, because it's rendered it out, but it didn't necessarily render out um, exactly a kind of musical length, if you, if you see what I mean. So because there's always a tiny bit of silence at the beginning of a file, typically. It's not like a, a download starts on the absolute first beat of the first bar of a piece of music. So to, let's just play this one. So there was a little bit of silence before that started. So what we need to basically do is step number one is you want to um, hook up the beginning of the audio. Do you want to just get that there so it's basically perfectly aligned with the beginning of the first bar. Now in Audacity again you can do something similar so you can um, generate a, a click track or rhythm track it's called and then you'll be able to see the metronome and that gives you kind of a visual you know, indication of where the main beats are. Sadly, it doesn't give you bars though. And that's why I think if you really want to create perfect loops, you just absolutely have to work in a door or in some kind of digital environment where you can see the actual bars, which are de you know, denoted by these numbers here, one, two, three, four, et cetera. Um, whereas if you're just in seconds, you know, it's just time code based thing or frame based, um, although that's obviously what you guys use for your videos and stuff, for music, it just isn't that helpful. All right, so what I'm going to do now is switch on the metronome just so I can check. And this is, again, something you can do on Audacity or all these other free doors. There'll always be a metronome option. And then we can compare the music to the click track, if you like. So I'll go from somewhere really obvious and we'll see what, what happens. We want to get this absolutely 100%. 
um, because the better this, this is the only bit of the process where you've got to really, really, really take your time. And you can use it visually. So can you see here how these, these, the amplitudes here of this waveform, that's obviously where the main, main beat is. And I believe, I feel like the metronome is still just a tiny, tiny smidge ahead. So we're just gonna drag that. Perfect, okay, good. So we finally got this thing lined up. And the next step then is to identify an area that we want to um, copy and then turn into a loop. And then basically, yeah, just loop out to make it uh, make the track longer. Now, in Audacity, there'll be um, some kind of cut feature, and in other doors, it'll be the same. There'll be like a you know a scissors thing, um, or other kinds of tools that you can use to just trim this. So what I'm going to do, it's actually this um, split by playhead command. So I can just do that there, and then I'll just jump forward. You can use you know shortcut keys and all sorts of stuff, but. Um, then there, I'm going to also split by playhead again. Now, this is now where, by hitting C, I'm going to hit create a cycle region. I'll have a listen. Turn the metro off now, actually. I don't need it anymore. So that looped absolutely perfectly. Now, Logic is obviously amazing for that as well. Um, but it does work. Now, again, something else that I feel you would be doing in a slightly subpar way if you were using something like Audacity is when you're moving stuff around, again, it could it could slip um, and become kind of slightly dislodged because of a kind of just working in um, frames or seconds and stuff. And there probably are some magnet features that I may not be aware of. I don't use Audacity at all, but um, I would just caution you when doing so that when you've identified your loop, you obviously have to make sure that that loop sits exactly perfectly next to the next loop, you know. Um, and then we can just audition how that sounds going from one to the other. Let's just check it does sound really good in the transition from this one through to this one. So we'll just play from here. Now, because the music's quite loud there as well, it's um, it kind of covers up a multitude of sins. You might find that there are very, very small pops and clicks. And if you want to avoid those, then you absolutely have to do a crossfade, which I've just applied here um, using, again, the inbuilt tools uh, from the door there'll be um, a way of doing that in your door of choice or the free tool that you want to use but yeah creating a crossfade at the, uh, the loop points is obviously fundamental as well uh, it just gets rid of any kind of audio artifacts um, so i think that's probably all we need to do for now and we've lengthened this track by you know these two extra portions and we've created a completely perfect loop because of syncing up the music with the bpm um, or rather using the BPM to inform us for the, the correct session and that the kind of project setup, but then more importantly, taking that waveform, syncing it up um, so that the BPM helps us line it up with the exact bars, which is you can see at the top there. And then as a last step, cutting and then, you know, duplicating and adding any crossfades if necessary. Um, so yeah, that's how you would create uh, perfect loops. Um, might do a separate video as well on how to create um, perfect loops from something that wasn't designed to loop in the first place because there are some really really cool powerful tricks you can do to make sure that no matter what part of music you select you can turn it into something that can loop infinitely and without any audio artifacts at all um, but as I say I might uh, do that in a separate thing all right hope that was useful and as ever happy editing cheers yeah.